was the consummate a producer. And very shrewd, very wise, but looking at him, he was a portly, short man, always laughing, and you would have thought he was a bit of a comedian, and that uh, you, you would have been right, but wrong. <laughs> he was a bit of a comedian. But behind that lay a very, very expert filmmaker. Do you know? Michael Klinger was a kind, generous, talented filmmaker. He operated very much as a hustler, which is more how we imagine uh, the American independent producer to operate uh, rather than the English producer. So I have to say he was rather atypical for his time and place. It's an astonishing range of films. He ranges from big budget, epic action adventure films like Gold and Shout of the Devil in the mid 70s. There's also the crime thrillers he was associated with. The most famous is Get Carter, 1971. He's also associated with the sexploitation staple of British cinema in the 70s with the Confession series. But also he's, he's very much associated with experimental young directors. The most famous is Roman Polanski, but there was also Peter Collins and Alistair Reed. What's extraordinary about I can hardly believe it, frankly, is that I got the letter in January of 1970, and the next letter which I looked at my files was from Robert Lippmann in October of the same year, saying how terrific he thought the film was. I mean, this would be inconceivable now that you could move from, from that at that pace to get a feature film finished. And it does say a lot about Michael as a producer, that he was able to, able to pull that off. And Michael's strength was his ability to recognise a, a good property and to bring people together um, to make that film. And I think that resulted in a, an extraordinary range uh, of projects that he, that he was involved in. So his idea was always to make wonderful pictures, you know. And obviously, if you ran into some, he was a pragmatist. If you ran into some financial, it would be confessions of a bus driver or something, and get a few quid, come back and get the script written. If Klinger had been part of the major circuits, I think he would have had far less creative freedom. He wouldn't have been able to undertake risk-taking films, which he certainly did do. But his freedom would have been circumvented by well, him not being allowed to do projects he wanted or being pushed towards projects which he might perhaps not have felt very enthusiastic about. He had a certain decency about him, and, and, and part of that would have been like what I was saying about Carter. Carter wasn't just a gangster, he was a gangster, but he didn't just come on and kill people and see close-ups and slit throats or bullets going into heads or anything like that. Carter had a morality, and so did Michael Klinger, and he stuck to that through all his movies, you know. Well, I would say that, you know, his prowess as a distributor affected incredibly the way that Carter was, was publicised. Bloody well tell me who sent you. You're a big man, but you're in bad shape. With me, it's a full-time job. Now behave yourself. So, I mean, it was a brilliantly uh, advertised film. I mean, the promotion was extraordinary. Every single bus in London had Kane as Carter. It was the first time I think those little blocked images on the back of London buses. And the posters, which are now, you know, extremely valuable, of course. Um, so the whole of, of the distribution of the film in the UK, I have to say, was, was excellent. Yeah, he kept on, yeah well, that, I think that's what you could say about him. That's what I would say about him. You knew that Michael would stay afloat no matter what happened. I mean, with me, I, I really loved Michael and I was so happy to have met him and worked with him. It was, it was a great experience. Great guy. <laughs>